Assalamu alaikum, you're listening to episode 10 of the Mind Heist podcast. This week's episode, we decided to do a sequel to the last episode on hardships. So a bit more to talk about victimization, romanticizing your hardship, and the signs and ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I think it will help a lot. I think it's beneficial. I think you'll enjoy it. Enjoy! Okay, welcome to the Mind Heist uh, part two of the hardship episode, which was such a juicy and uh, really important topic that we're going to do part two, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. I'm here as well. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Muhammad's here. You know what, Muhammad? Someone told me that this was that was our best episode, last episode. Really? Yeah. Well... We're going to do another one. <laughs> Inshallah, even better. I almost didn't make and it. And we also said, we also said we're going to do um marriage episode, this one. Oh, so yeah. uh, we just kind of have to apologize for that. I make promises I can't keep. Welcome to marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll do one for sure, Inshallah. Yeah, eventually. We'll do one for sure. Eventually. In the meantime... Send in your suggestions for topics. I mean, we got topics, right? But, you know, if there's something specific people want. Now, the reason we're kind of doing Hardship Part 2 is because, like, I think there was a lot more to say. And because it was a good episode in general. And because we were a bit rushed. And, uh, like, everyone's going to go through hardship as well, isn't it? Like, mm. you know, we talked about, I don't know, we talked about education and media and stuff. But not everyone's involved in that, right? So... So yeah, uh, Muhammad, you're very quiet. It's okay. Well, listen, we were meant to record at nine, and then I was having this dream of you. I had a dream of you telling me to no record. Way. Yeah, Le- but then I no. said to you in my dream, "I'm going to go fishing." I mean, I'm on on my way to go fishing, and then yeah. suddenly my wife runs through the door, which wasn't a dream. She runs in the room. She's like, "Aren't you recording at nine? I was like, "Oh yeah, of course, of course I am." Yeah, what time is it? And then I saw your messages. <laughs> I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's a good story, you know. So where, where were you going to fish? At Brighton. I live in Brighton. I was going to go to the fishing where I usually go. Down on the boat. It was a calm, calm day, morning, Wait, whatever. Wait, you fish? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I go fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh, I if, need you, to... if you were still down here, I'd take you. No, I was just gonna say, like, I've I've got to try that out. Can you do it any time of year, or? Yeah, yeah, more or less. Yeah, it's really fun. I love it. Wait, you go on the boat or off like a? Pier? No, we go on the boat. Not my boat. You got? Not yeah. my boat. No, you can rent. Like, so there's boat rentals where you can pay. I don't know, twenty quid, and you go out for about ninety minutes. Keep whatever you catch. What? Yeah. That's sick. Yeah, it's really good. Really, really good. Wait, so can you go on this boat? Twenty pound, ninety minutes. Is it just you on the boat, or you need right, anyone to else? It? No, no, no. It's their boat, so they literally, you know, they hire it out for people to jump on and fish. They give you a rod, they give you the bait, and you can just fish. But would, would they? They have to drive it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They drive it. Oh right. So you they'll can't take go you like to, just you. No, nah, they'll take you to the spots where they know that there's going to be fish, and you sort of do your business. Sick guy. I know. Sick guy. I want to try it. Well, like, I'm serious. Like. I think it's quite oh, it's good, a cool bro. hobby. Bro, if 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 you if you're facing some hardships, I'm trying to link this in. <laughs> go but for go real. do some fishing. No, honestly, it's so like therapeutic because it teaches mm. you a bit of patience, it teaches you like, a bit of you know, it, it makes you of, when I'm out there, it really reminds yeah. me of like how things used to be done, you know? Yeah. A man had mm. to work and wait for his meal and mm. and so, I, I love it. I really do. It just I like to I like to forget that I'm on this, you know, sort of semi-modern boat and forget mm. I'm using, you know, modern tools. Mm. I like to just imagine that right mm. down there under that ocean because this is the way I look at it. And I'm, I'm not forcefully trying to link this in, but it's, it's really true. Like, mm. because the ocean is so vast and you can't mm. see underneath the surface, but you've mm. got this rod underneath and you're just really and truthfully, I always try and think, well, this is, this is a metaphor for Allah's rizq, right? The rizq that Allah mm. gives us. Yeah, and it's you know it's out of sight, but your rod is there and you're expecting it because you you oh. believe that Allah's going to give it to you. 
والله العظيم oh, you went deep no but what, I swear to god because I'll do it and this is, this is what I'll think of because you're just sitting there holding the rod and you're just waiting for some sort of movement that isn't the movement of you know the, the sea swaying and the wind yeah. and that you, you sort of looking yeah. out for this one movement that's a bit irregular so you become more sensitive to the, the world around you, like yeah. the environment yeah. around you. I mean, some people I know hate it. Like some people I know aren't, don't enjoy it at all because they don't like the waiting aspect. They just want to put their rod in and get something out. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah, and it really that is. Actually, that shows a, uh, what's the word, a kind of handicap that they have when it comes to the natural world, if you like. Mm, exactly. You know? you know what? Uh, this is actually a very good point you've brought up. And, you know, maybe this... I, we'll go into the hardship thing, but this is actually a really good point you brought up. It's like, because I've been thinking about this as well, yeah? Um, a lot of the problems we see Muslims going through mm. uh, in the past, whatever, maybe 30 years, right? In terms of uh, changing the religion and, um, you know, their whole mindsets being changed, especially Muslims that live outside of the Muslim world and everything, yeah? Bid'ah and, and liberalism and all this stuff, yeah? Yeah. I feel like the... The only way that, that people's mindsets around that stuff have changed is because they strayed from the fitrah, okay? Yeah. And it's easy to stray from the fitrah when you're living in a city and you're, you're not in touch with um, n- nature, right? Because really, Allah, because of course Allah knows that a, a large way of our connection to Him is, is connection through the creation, if you like. That's why the, uh, Allah tells us in the Quran, uh, you know, do they not look at this? Or look at this, you know, he tells mm. us to look at it. He tells us to look. He doesn't tell us, look at, like, um, I don't know, something which is kind of synthetic. He's telling you, look at the, the, the stars and the sky and the, and the animals, right? Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the, the area. Uh, you, know, you know the area where the, the people who have come to believe and their, their faith is very strong, they say, they look at the nature and they say, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا uh, Bartila, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so he's, they're, they're saying like they're looking at nature, and their 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 response to looking at it is like, oh Allah, oh, oh our Lord, yeah. Because they're not saying Allah. Maybe they don't know Allah. Maybe the scripture didn't uh, reach them or whatever. But automatically by looking at nature, their fitra kicks in, and they say, our Lord, you've mm. not created this for nothing, mm. yeah. And then the the mad thing is after that, what do they say? So save us from the punishment of the hellfire. So maybe these people didn't even receive revelation, but the natural consequence of looking at nature and maybe looking at human nature and looking at the injustices in, in the world, their natural uh, um, con- uh, conclusion was, well, this is, our Lord is just, and so this isn't going to be it. There's going to be judgment later. Yeah. It's very crazy, crazy area. So uh, what I'm trying to say is, if you stray from the fitra, it's easy to stray from Allah because you know uh, Allah puts His signs. I mean, that's what the, that's what ayat are. Part of the ayat that we have are the Quran itself, mm. and then part of it is in nature, isn't mm. it? Um, and and if you if you go fishing, you know you 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 kind of have to just sit there and take in what Allah has made and the natural cycles of the world and uh, patience and. Oh, it's mad! It's mad. It's the thing. It's that lack of relationship, that lack of closeness, and and um, I don't know awareness is what makes a hardship harder than it actually is, though, isn't it? Mm, I mean, because yeah, like if you if you appreciate that, uh, for example, you know, Allah says, "Tilka al nas." Yeah, mm. uh, these are the days that we we cycle stuff between people. Yeah, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Yeah, mm. if if you're kind of um, in a, living in a synthetic world. You won't know about history. You don't won't know about human nature and you know what's called the the sunan of Allah, like how the cycles and the nature of things, how Allah makes things, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and if you appreciate that, then when you go through a hard time, you're like, you know, this is my cycle of hardship, and then good comes after, and hardship and good, you know. I think I feel bad for um, a lot of people that don't have any part of nature around them because. Like, you know, I, I have been to London a lot, and I have been to London, God, I go to London a lot, and yeah. um, it is, at least the areas I go to are very, you know, very urban, all city, all, yeah. and you forget that you're on God's green earth, so to speak, mm. you know, mm. and um, it it very is true. quite incredible if you do put yourself in a position or an area where there is just raw nature, 
and mm. it doesn't. It's sort of. It's almost like a. It's almost like where man is meant to be, because it sort of beckons you back to how things used to be, and mm. gives you a sense of subhanallah. Look at that, or it, it, mm. the vastness of it. Like at the moment down in Brighton, well, I don't know if that's going on anymore, but um, maybe last month we have mm. uh, every year this like murmuration of birds. I don't know if you know what that means. You know what that a means? what of birds? Murmuration, I think it's called. So it's basically mm. like you get giant flocks of birds that yeah. you might have seen it on YouTube or something, where okay. they literally sway all together all over the sky and they kind of move. I don't know, like as if one giant flock, thousands of birds, and they'll wow. just fly over the seafront. So like in all weird shapes and sizes. So from far away, it looks like I don't know if you ever seen like a cartoon of bees. And they're all like right. sort of chasing someone and making all these weird oh. shapes, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's a bit like that. But you just look at that and you're like, subhanAllah, none of those birds are hitting each other. They don't crash mm. into each other. They all sort of move at the same time. Sort of like um, if you've seen any documentaries of schools of fish, when they're yeah, yeah. Yeah, loads of fish together and it's sort of, the mm. same thing. But seeing that in the sky, and it's always at sunset, always, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's always on top of the pier. And I just mm. think, like, you know, there's an A in the Quran about. Um, uh, God, I'm not going to be able to recite it. Surah Al Mulk. Well, you said, "Bihuna lillahi ma fil samawati wa ma fil ard." That's the ayah, I believe. And everything in you know everything in the world, everything between the heavens and the earth, praises the Lord and it praises ah, the Lord. In its... Yeah, and you don't know how, and you don't know, you know, you you won't know. But it always gives me that inclination that these sort of almost miracles in front of your eyes are yeah. that and it really does sort of melt away any sort of doubt or despair that you have because if that's possible, then anything's possible, you know? Mm, yeah, definitely. Like, it's much more complicated for those birds to be doing that than for you to find a job or whatever, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the issue is. Yeah, yeah. So, how not that, man? And honestly, and, uh, I, I hate to, yeah. I hate, sorry, add on, but look at what you're, like, I mean, I mean, if you're in a bad state and you're going through bad things, mm. It's my belief that the things you have and the things you've been blessed with are probably yeah. better than I, I don't know. Not it's a bit of a weird one. It depends on the person, but better than what you used to have. Like you, you will be ignorant of the blessings that you've been given up to a certain point. A lot yeah. of people generally get you know their life gets better. They learn more. They're able to do more. They're able to be you know a better job or better. Uh, living standard or whatever there is generally this progression because we're always trying to aim for better hopefully anyway yeah. so you know taking myself as an example maybe i don't know the income i had before wasn't the same or the possessions i had before wasn't the same or the lifestyle you know there's things that i wanted so much when i was younger i've mm. got now but i've completely forgotten that i that, that desire that i had oh, for it yeah i got you yeah you know perspective yeah. and it's, it's good to sort of go back in time in your mind and think well actually I really wanted X, Y, Z and now I've got it and I've completely forgot that I've got it and I'm too focused on the future that I'm forgetting what yeah. I've achieved in the past yeah subhanAllah and also you know we talked about these cycles between good and bad yeah yeah maybe after every hardship that you finish the cycle of hardship when you reach the good again you might be a higher level of good than previous yeah definitely I'm just trying to think like you know like Malcolm X you know, something terrible happened to him that he was dealing drugs and, and uh, robbing people's homes and stuff, right? Yeah. Then then uh, he got caught, he, got, he went to jail. And it was in jail that he kind of was introduced to Islam. And he started reading and learning. And he just changed, basically, his whole... He just changed completely, you know, mm. in prison. You know, then he got out of prison and uh, he... he you, you know he's genuine as well because he was in the nation of Islam for all those years and working with it. And then after all of that, after putting in so much work for the nation of Islam, mm. he, he basically stood up and said, I was wrong. You know, nation of Islam is, is like a scam, basically. Yeah. And then he became like a proper Muslim. So it's like, um, you know, the, that, that period in prison was imagine being caged up like so so horrible really yeah but but like it caused him to read it caused him to find out about nation of islam and eventually islam itself and it, it's mad all. yeah it's a hardship it's it's a mad. hardship is what you make it then isn't it i mean like i like we said last episode any hardship can always be brought back to well this is bringing me closer to allah and that's the good i'm gonna make out of this 
You know, and it, well, and, it, it won't necessarily bring you closer to Allah, and that's the test, isn't it? Well, that's yeah. That, I, well, I'd like to, yeah. I guess rephrasing that, it's it's an opportunity to if you yeah, are willing yeah. to behave in a, you know in accordance yeah. with it. Yeah, and you know, I said there was a lot of ayat that I didn't mention last time. Uh, one ayah that is is uh, related to what you just said is uh, from Surah at taghabun Allah says, "Wama asaba bin musibatin illa bi idnillah." Yeah. No specifically targeted hardship at this one person, yeah, will hit them except by the will of Allah, yeah. And then, so Allah's talking about hardships, yeah. And Allah's saying that basically, you know, we know from the ayah uh, in, in Surah Al Baqarah, for example, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها, yeah, mm. that Allah will not give hardships upon people or, or will not give burden people with more than they can handle, right? So in this ayah, uh, Surah Al Taghabun, Allah's saying, that every hardship is specifically given to each person, right? Because it depends on how you are and what you can handle, right? Then Allah says straight after that, He says, uh, uh, And, and who, so basically Allah says, to talk about hardship, then afterwards Allah says, and whoever believes, Allah will guide his heart, yeah? So basically, if you're going through hardship and you, your, your faith is firm and you're basically passing this test that, that we're just talking about and you're, you took that opportunity through the hardship to get closer to Allah, then Allah is saying that he will guide um, your heart. You know, Allah mm-hmm. mentions guiding people in the Quran, but his, Allah says guide your heart, which is like the key thing, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so it, you know, like this hardship will be a, an opportunity to get that guidance from Allah. Uh, and not to mention, you know, the other area where um, it, it's not it's not about hardship per se. It's about struggling. So struggling it could be part of hardship. Um, what's it called? وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا You know, those who struggle and strive in the path of Allah, then لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ uh, سُبُولَنَا uh, We will no doubt guide them to our path, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and Allah, men- Allah uses... Walla the lamb there, Walla Nahdiannahum, the noon at the end as well. These are two uh, ways of emphasizing. So in one word, Allah's used two ways to emphasize that we will no doubt uh, uh, guide them. Mm. So uh, there's a lot there's a lot of uh, hope in these ayat. Yeah. Definitely and it's something that you know it, it takes time to internalize, but it, it's a process, isn't it? It takes a while. But once it's there, once it's in your mind, mm. and you can accept that and have that a bit yeah. of tawakkul for it, then um, mm. you know doors open up for you. Mm. Um, I was and, just and, go on, yeah, go on. Oh no, go ahead. I've <laughs> talked too much. <laughs> I was just thinking about um, putting your hardship into perspective, though, because it crossed my mind. I guess a lot of um, I was just thinking. I was going through Twitter and thinking, what are these like? What are generally hardships that people are facing at the moment? And then okay. I started realizing that a lot of I mean, obviously, there's there's genuine difficult times for people, but then there's people incur hardships upon themselves by uh, what they desire in this world, which isn't necessarily mandatory for them to have, but because they can't get it, it becomes a mm. hardship for them. So, right, I, I don't know whether it's um, you know things to do with wanting to get married. Or things to do with, you know, money, wanting a better job, this and that, their own house, their own this, their own that. Um, and really, you, you, you've got to really assess the situation and think to yourself, is what I'm after, like, a life or death situation? Is it something I really desperately need? Because is, is, is the way it's upsetting me that I don't have it, is it reflective of how much I need this thing? Mm, so if yeah. you're getting worked up and really upset about because here's the thing people want to get married right here's an example okay. but people get fixated on one specific person that they desperately want to marry <clears throat> yeah when really it's not necessarily like marriage isn't about that person it's about mm. the actual you know fulfilling the rights of some you know between you and Allah and getting married and, and yeah, it's about understand? reaching the objective it's reaching the objective not certainly. so people get hook, hang, hung up on that one individual and you see it a lot yeah. with girls and boys and whatever and they it just it's just quite crazy um mm. that fixation because you know you know what love does to people and infatuation and that it, it just drives them crazy and and that becomes mm. their hardship 
when really yeah, it's and, and 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 I do advise anyone going through that and assessing that because at the end of the day, let's say you want someone and it's not compatible, or their father isn't you know happy with it or whatever. Okay, mm. you know, khali walli, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> Just move on because that fixation isn't. A, I don't believe it's a genuine hardship that's healthy for you. And if you're complaining day and night to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, oh, I really want her, I really want her, or I really want him, or whatever. Yeah. That person might not even be good for you, but you're so fixated on it, you're creating a hardship for yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, and I yeah, see that a lot. I, I see that a lot. I see a lot of fixation on certain things. People like really want this specific job. I really want this, this, this. You know, yeah. and they'll they'll keep making dua for it, keep making dua for it, keep making dua for it. Not really yeah. allowing any sort of um, doors to be open anywhere else. Mm. And then they believe that they're going through some sort of test or hardship, not realizing mm. that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping you away from such a thing yeah. because such a thing could yeah. be bad for you. And you yeah. need to just explore other avenues instead of... Because at the end of the day, if that thing is destined for you, then even if yeah. you explore all the other avenues in the world, you'll end up back at that thing. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. So it's like uh, there, the, there is hardship which comes to you and there's hardship that you kind of go to, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I'd really like, and, 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 and both I, are written by Allah, but you have choices in life. Yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. I've spoke to people who, you know, want to like they'll they'll come to me as sort of like a middleman because they want to marry so and so person or whatever. Yeah, and I'll say to them like, you know, I don't think it's going to work out, but mm. at the end of the day, what I will say to you is, don't fixate on it. Go, mm. you know, go around the world and back, so to speak. And if it's meant yeah. to be, it will happen without you, you know, lifting a finger. But right now, yeah. you know, just just don't fixate on it. But you know, teenagers and stuff, and the it's feelings not very everywhere. romantic of you to say, Muhammad. <laughs> I know, but it's a reality, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hundred percent true, and you you can still be romantic about it without. Uh, basically, um, it's true. Yeah, you should not you should not be too rigid in what you want. Yeah. Mm. Why? Because we we spoke about this, I think, in the last episode about being humble mm. uh, in terms of knowing what is good for you. Right? Be humble and say, I don't know what's good for me. This person I want to marry, yeah, mm. they seem, it's good to say, they seem to be ideal. Mm. Yeah. But, uh, and when you say seem, it leaves the door open for acknowledging that Allah knows best. Yeah. You know, Allah knows what's best for you. Yeah. And, you know, in the past, uh, I've been in this situation where I want something and I, 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 you know, I'm pretty certain it's good for me, but always got to keep that door open. Like, maybe it's not good for me. You know, Allah knows yeah. best in the end. And, and so uh, it's the, about humility, really. The blessing is that maybe later on you do see that it was bad for you, you know, whatever it may be. Oh um, man, I've, I've had some really bad yeah. stories with that. Yeah, and it's good. And like I said, this goes back to what we said last episode about time shows that you know, with with due time, you you can mm. cultivate this correct mindset because of the experiences that you've been through. Mm. You know, yeah. and looking back and seeing, oh look what look at look at that bullet I dodged, or you know, so it's it's For quite sure, phenomenal. Man. Quite phenomenal. And when when you see that, it's like it forces you to just be like, okay, yeah, like. I've got some idea of what I want to do and what I like and what I dislike. But in the end, it's like Allah knows best. Allah, no Allah knows best. I mean, think of some of the hardships people have been through. I mean, inclu- like, even if we go simply to the prophets of Allah, yeah? Yeah. Salam, like, they went through so much hardship, yeah? And maybe some of them never rested, you know, for their whole life. They never got any rest from the hardship. But, like, Jannah's worth it, like... It's worth it, uh, and they're not even in the normal Jannah, you know, they're in the highest ranks of Jannah. Hmm. So it's like fully worth it, you know, even if your whole life is hardship, like, so be it. As long as, like you said, you know, you're taking the opportunity to get closer to Allah, it's, it's calm, as they say. It won't feel calm. I'm not expecting people to be chilling with, like, sitting on lava and be like, yeah, <laughs> go oh, to no, Jannah. Yeah, yeah. yeah? It's not, that's no problem that you're, you are suffering, but as long as you keep, um, your eyes on the prize, if you like, in terms of, inshallah, will get you closer to Allah and, and you get, get to Jannah, you know. Um, and that, that's something else I wanted to mention, some ayat about how, um, it's also related to what you're saying about perspective, really, because, and it's also related to what you're saying about fitrah, yeah, and, and nature and, and spending time in nature, because in nature you see that um, there is just hardship and it's just part of the survival, you know. Mm. I, I saw a cat the other day 
and this cat okay it's it's like jaw is hanging off yeah oh, i don't know how that happened but it's been like that for for months so it's obviously a permanent thing yeah yeah okay then i just saw it yesterday it's got it's like limping and its legs like falling oh. off okay oh. i don't know, i guess it's fighting with other cats okay oh, no. but when you see this stuff yeah you're like you know life's hard like in no, general yeah for the cats you know these birds you're talking about yeah. probably a couple of them like drop dead in the middle of the yeah. air yeah. You know, but in general, the thing is working, yeah? yeah? But anyway, the point is that there is hardship and there is tests. And uh, Allah promises us. You remember how I said, وَلَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ The two things for emphasis. Mm. Equally, Allah says uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ, ال- من الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرَ الصَّابِرِينَ mm. You know, and... Uh, so again, the two things for emphasis and for kind of certainty were la nablu ennakum. We will, without any doubt, uh, test you with some of, because maybe I'm not sure, but maybe Allah is saying some of, meaning compared to Jahannam, it's not much. Yeah. Yeah. Bishayim min al khawf. You know, with some things of you know fear and and hunger and uh, loss of wealth and loss of family and people. And loss of, uh, well, it says mal and thamarat. I guess thamarat is like food and, and uh, fruits and all of that. Mm. And وَبَشِّرَ الصَّابِرِينَ And, you know, give good news to the people that are patient through all of that. So, so again, Allah, like, no one should be living this synthetic life where they see maybe people on Instagram thinking it is possible to live a life without hardship. Yeah. No, no, it's just being covered up or people are not talking about it, you know. Uh, everyone's going to be tested and Allah's promised you that so don't be deluded thinking uh, you know I can go through life and it's going to be you know without tests you know and Allah's mentioning all the types of tests here yeah um, and it's it's uh, unescapable so as long as you got it in your head like okay there is going to be hardships don't do it. and then when the hardship hits you you'll be like okay I kind of expected it in a way you know like, it's like what you're saying Muhammad last episode about the, the kuffar, when their family die, they take it so badly because they kind of deluded into thinking this wasn't going to happen. Yeah. There's and no, it, it makes it hard to... It's, it's uh, romanticizing the hardships, which really, you know, we, we, we're, um, we're guilty of doing as well. Uh, this is a great topic, well. Yeah, it's, it's like, you, I'll go, I, know, I keep using Twitter as an example, but you go through Twitter now, or any social media, really, Someone who's mm. going through a hard time wants the world to know that they're going through a hard time. And yeah. then it's it's sort of like wallowing in the sadness kind of thing. Yeah, self-pity. Self-pity, victimization, why yeah. me, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. And um, yeah. doesn't help you. It doesn't help your... Because you were mentioning a, a last episode about gratitude. It gives you no mm. sense of gratitude for anything that you're going through. You know? Yeah. Um, it does sort of uh, disable you in terms of moving forward. And uh, in all honesty, you know, the, the reality is nobody really cares. <laughs> like, yeah. I know that's just the way it is because you go out there, you're calling out to people to sort of acknowledge your difficulty. And, you know, you'll get one yeah. or two people that might actually care about you and, and ask you what's up and that. But because yeah. you keep, you're constantly wallowing in it, those people haven't got the energy mm. for you because they've got their own lives as well. They might help here and there, but they're mm. not going to stick with you for the entire ride. And the only person who is going to stick with you, mm. the only being who's going to stick with you is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right. desires your gratitude and your, you know, tawakkul and your good opinion of him mm-hmm. that, you know, what's the point of you not trying to change things up here in your head, you know? So yeah. it's, yeah. it's, 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 and that's you know the thing. I think though, Muhammad is, to be fair, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. To be fair, I do believe that in the past, people might not have complained as much as now and people might not have had that kind of uh, self-pity thing as much. Yeah? Mm. Now, why is that? I, I, my theory is that people's family structures were tighter, people's relationships were tighter, yeah, and that allowed them to kind of have that support, feel that support without even asking for it. Yeah, you get me. So what these people are doing on on social media, or um, I guess usually it's social media because it's a bit of a faceless way to just put yeah. it out there. Yeah, um, what they're doing is they're kind of calling out for someone to be there for them and to give them the support right. that 
maybe a hundred years ago they would have got automatically just from having strong family ties Allahu alam. this is yeah. one of the reasons i think it might be the case so in that sense we can do better in terms of our family cultivating stronger ties mm -hmm. on the other side just because you're, you're you know you don't feel the support from your family automatically it's still no good for you to go venting on on the internet because uh it pu pushes you deeper into that victim mentality and the self-pity mm. which just keeps you in that hard place for longer and mm. i have no doubt about that that's it actually makes things much worse you know it, uh, it's very pertinent during uh <laughs> during relationships that break down with people because mm. all you'll see is like an indirect or and it's not even indirect a lot of the time it's not even an indirect that's like an insulting one it's yeah. more of a like baby please come back to me kind of indirect <laughs> you know and i see it i see it on i see it on muslim twitter all the time isn't that isn't that called a direct yes yeah, uh, yeah but it's not <laughs> this is the thing like i used to annoy me so much and i will kid you not i have dm'd people telling them to stop yeah. like brothers who will do it on twitter because um, it's pathetic a because bit, because it? you've you know and, I, and i'm gonna use i'm gonna judge by what's apparent yeah. And that is what we do, and that's just the bottom line. But what's what's apparent is, through this behaviour, it's clear to see someone was in a relationship they shouldn't have been in, or yeah. they wanted to marry someone that it didn't work out. Things broke mm. down. Suddenly, you're really upset about it. You're calling out. You're putting out like um, semi vague messages on social media out for the world to see whether it's a lyric from a song or a you know, like I said earlier, yeah, life thing. Yeah, something like that. Thinking that people are either going to get it or not get it, and whatever, just you know, trying to you know, whatever. I don't know. And I've DM people and I've said to them, "Bro, what are you doing? <laughs> like, really? Yeah. Well, truthfully, what are you doing?" Um, hmm. But it goes back to that that the whole self inflicted uh, hardship, uh, infatuation, hmm. um, going down a path that really because this is the thing: if you're doing something that's wrong. Right, mm. and it, and it's happened. Forget, okay, let's put love and all that to the side. I've had it where people are lost money through gambling, right? Yeah. Or they have, uh, I don't know, some sort of sin that's led yeah. them to make their life worse. Mm. Then it's a cry for help yeah. instead of toba, and it's mm. my hardship is legitimate instead of seeking our last forgiveness, right? Mm. And it, it, this is the dichotomy, and then it's all self-inflicted stuff, really and truthfully. Mm. I mean, look at the look at the, the, in the like the ayat that you mentioned about the the hardships that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives us, right? Yeah, Allah speaks. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speaks of them because they directly, almost, you know, it seems like they directly come from Allah. Like it's Allah's command that this is going to befall you. Like it's yeah. like almost like you've had a bad harvest, right? Mm. You've done everything you can do. And it's halal. There's nothing wrong with you know put, planting crops and and then you know receiving the harvest at the end of the year. But it's some you know something out of your hands has caused that hardship. Uh, yeah. Bad health, you know, that's a hardship. But when it's something that you've been an idiot, yeah. you've committed a sin, and mm. you've inflicted yourself with this. And yes, mm. everything is through Allah, no doubt. Everything's through Allah. But your mm. issue now isn't necessarily. Oh Allah, get me out of this. Your issue is Toba. Your issue is to repent from this that's caused you this. And then, yeah. then obviously seek Allah's help in changing the situation. Because really and truthfully... Yeah, basically, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, it, just to close it up, but really and truthfully, mm. I'd be, you should put yourself in a mindset where actually I'd rather be punished for my sin now, this way, than punished for it in the afterlife. You know? Yeah, no so, doubt. And it comes back to humility as well, bro. Mm. It's like... Uh, <laughs> like okay you did something that's haram okay hmm. you knew it was haram you did it and even if you didn't know actually i'll get i'll get to that yeah you've yeah. done something haram yeah and you know it, you messed up basically you you, you uh, uh it caused you like hardship now rather than just in the akhirah right yeah like it it's it, it, you're saying the rea reaction should be the main reaction and concern should be toba first yeah yeah and the thing is though you kind of have to take the l per se mm, yeah uh you have to take the l properly like take the l you messed up you did a, you not only did you did the sin but you also flopped doing the sin yeah yeah so halas take the l 
yeah and when you take the l properly you're going to be like look i deserve this whatever hardship yeah. i've got myself in yeah and that makes it actually easier to kind of move on and like be like okay look i messed up i'm not gonna mess up again i'm gonna do toba and you know maybe by doing toba allah will will uh, help me out in this yeah. you know uh, but you but first you got to be humble you got to take the l first yeah i think uh, i was thinking of um the reactions to these situations and yeah. going back to like self wallowing and self pity what is yeah. the number one thing somebody does mm. when you know the you know when when it hits the fan so to speak because mm. they feel bad because they feel down let's put mm. a little sad sad track on you know, and wallow in my pain a bit more. <laughs> no, it's yeah, it's, it's so cool. there. It's there for everyone to see. I see it all the time on social media. Good practicing brothers, yeah. right? Yeah. Go through a hard time, and then suddenly yeah. their tweets and their Facebook posts are song lyrics, mm. and it's almost like I'm going to put this lyric up because it speaks so much to me. But yeah. nobody's going to know that it's a lyric. They're going to think it's something. Do you understand? Like, it's very strange. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit of a vague one. Yeah. But no, bro. Mm. I know for a fact what you're doing. And it's not good. It's not healthy. Well, I have it's not healthy. I know I know. Mm. music is a difficult one. But this is generally, I see it as the next step in a lot of people's... So it goes from the sin to the hardship that's associated with the sin because you flop the sin. And then it's... Uh, sad songs and then you're flopping the t- the hardship. You're well. flopping, yeah. They're flopping the next step to get yourself out of that. Pull yourself out of these yeah. situations with good and mm. not more. I, you know. Yeah, I think though, Muhammad. Um, to be fair, if, if if in your time of ease or easier than this hardship time, yeah, that you were not kind of had some kind of basic connection to Allah. Yeah, you know, praying, maybe reading some Quran, uh, you know, once or twice a week at least. Yeah, if you're not. It, then it becomes hard to react in a positive way when you got the hardship. Yeah. And this is, this is actually the message is like, it doesn't matter ease or hardship. Our purpose is to worship Allah, right? Of course. And what will bring us ease, whether it's in ease or in hardship is, um, is having that is, is worshiping Allah basically. So, um, I do feel like if in your day to day, you know, you, you're praying, obviously you, you're making dua, you know, here and there, you know, maybe in your sujood or something, um, you're taking five minutes to do some kind of uh, istighfar or something mm. and reading some Quran, then when the hardship hits, you, 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 you probably would not turn to the music as much or you wouldn't turn to uh, self-pity as much. Mm. You probably turn more to uh, actually praying, you know, and actually reading the Quran. I know um, through, through some kind of hardships um, that I've been through, when I turn to... to Allah like whether it's like kind of reading the Quran and reflecting on it or whatever like it's just so effective man and sometimes it does the the makes me swallow the pill of uh you know just kind of get over it and and get out of your victim mode sometimes yeah. that's what I need and sometimes it's like well you know uh, you, inshallah you'll be purified of sins from this and it gives you whatever you need to be honest mm. so um it's right it's, you're right Muhammad it's like it's, it's a bit pathetic to be wallowing in self-pity on the flip side though you you need to cultivate yourself beforehand mm. I think uh, this is why like, that's I, a good message to put out there I feel like um, somewhere deep down because the the hardship isn't like a uh, you know life or death situation or really in the grand scheme of things a huge big deal I think there's some mm. part of people that are going through that that sort of enjoy it a bit because um yeah it's a bit of a what's the best way of saying it it's like it's like it's like a bit of a drama and everybody loves to be the centerpiece of a drama you know or the main character of a movie another reason though another reason is this is the thing i i do believe that deep down humans hate responsibility yeah right and when you're a victim halas there's no more responsibility uh, yeah. because when you see yourself as a victim it's like well i'm a victim of course i shouldn't be expected to carry out any responsibilities yeah. so for that period where you're wallowing in self pity you feel like and i i do believe this is the addictive part of the victim mentality you feel like there's no responsibilities and you can't actually do wrong in that yeah. period of time and actually i'm saying this from personal experience right so i'm i'm not actually judging what other people were feeling deep in their head i yeah. felt this and i realized that's at least partly the addictive part of self-pity is lack the the responsibility you feel it's gone 
It's true. It's true. You can so, use it sorry, as an excuse. Sorry, continue, man. No, yeah, you're right. You use it as an excuse. Yeah. Like, well, oh, <laughs> your mum comes and asks you to take out the trash. Oh, no, uh, you know, I'm still feeling really down. You know, mm. you want to go to... And this goes back to... I know I'm not going to... I don't want to diss depression or whatever. But when I went... Because obviously I mentioned my thing. I stopped going to uni. I stopped going to work. I stopped doing anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whether it would have helped if I did go, I lie at him. It probably mm. might have, you know, but it might, yeah. because it would have given me a, an opportunity to forget a little mm. about whatever I felt. But that's a yeah. different kettle of fish, and I can't really talk about it because it's such a that's something else, you know. But but, I, but it's true, bro. Yeah, I think you were, were going to say it anyway. Go on. No, I was depression. just I was just going to say like it. It's a step. It's a stage process. I think it leads to like your initial victimization leads to. Uh, you know depression in a sense because mm, if yeah. i if i nipped it in the bud with the right mindset from the start i might have not gone that far yeah you know? and i think we we can we can definitely tackle this in our mental health episode but look yeah um i know a little bit i'm not going to say i know a lot i know a little bit about psychology yeah and yeah. p the psychology says that um a lot of mental health uh, illnesses they the 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 biological side of it yeah because people say no depression is not from your mindset it's from you know you just get it okay you yeah. can't help it yeah you know what they say psychologists they say if you have a tendency in your genes or however you're made up yeah, yeah you have a tendency for depression however that depression will not get triggered it won't be activated unless you're in this the correct mindset mind state to trigger it mm. This is very profound, bro. Mm. What that means is your depression might not even happen. Let's say you're prone to depression. Mm. It may not even happen if you have the right mindset. Yeah. And that's why uh, mental illness is not actually a full excuse. Maybe, you know, maybe you're in some really bad circumstances you, you couldn't control, right? However, there is always an element of self-control and what you're doing in your head to mm. stop the depression being triggered in the first place. And like you're saying... Uh, Self pity it can trigger biological depression. Mm. Mm. I think uh, I was thinking just now of the right mindset. Um, mm. The the thing is that with the right right mindset, it is a difficult one to cultivate because I feel like what people do to avoid any any of this sort of these issues mm. is the mindset that they do cultivate is one with a very high ego, uh, very maybe selfish mentality. Yeah, you know, yeah. very like. Excuse Who the French. cares? What yeah, excuse of, yeah. F the world. I'll do my own thing. Yeah. Kind of, you know, and um, again, bro, this is what I'm saying. It's getting rid of responsibility. Yeah, I was going to say that. I was going to say back to that. It's the fact that because, in all honesty, like when I went through yeah. what I went through, what got me out of it was yeah. that it was that right kind of because I wouldn't say when I got out because it lasted two three months, right, and then. Yeah. Uh, although I never stopped praying throughout the whole thing, and I'll, and I'll say that to anybody, right? Because no matter how low your iman gets, if you've got that connection and that rope, rope to hold on to, then you know there's going to be a yeah. way out, inshallah. Never get to a point where even the fundamentals are gone. You know, keep your fundamentals yeah. there. Yes, maybe your yeah. sunnah and your extras are going to, you know, diminish. But as long as you've got that base and that foundation, then mm. inshallah, here, you know. But yeah, I got out of it sort of through arrogance and being an idiot you know and I won't mm. hide it because I was um, yeah. until I just you know I guess I had the self realisation and this is why I'm talking like this and I don't want anyone listening and you know the same goes for you I don't want anyone listening to this thinking that we're both on our high horses because really and truthfully any words I say I generally aimed at myself and I'll generally because mm. I, I, I've been through sort of things like this when I'm saying don't do this and don't do that. It's because I probably did it myself and I'm very angry with myself, not necessarily whoever's still yeah. doing it. So I don't want people doing yeah. the same stuff I did. So yeah, that whole mm. reaction and self-victimization and, and acting like an idiot and having some stupid ego, it doesn't mm. help and it actually does more harm than good. Because suddenly, you know, you've gone through this stage of weakness, you've come out and now you're all arrogant and, you know, you then burn loads of bridges because you're just being an idiot and then when you realize subhanallah look what's happened not only do i have to recover from you know the, the depression or whatever what i went through i also have to recover from this ugly ego that i've developed and now i have yeah. to settle down and be a good muslim you know so you know what ego is 
ego is uh, basically a defense mechanism mm. for insecurities, mm. you know. So it, it makes sense that in order to try and get out of depression or feeling down or hardships, that you would create this wall around yourself of ego um, to kind of lie to yourself to say, yeah, who does care? You know, usually if you have to say, I don't care, it means you do care, innit? Yeah. Um, and that's the reality. And I agree with you, man. It's like um, a lot of what I've said in this episode is theoretical in yeah. terms of... Uh, it's not actually theoretical. Yeah? A lot of stuff we've said is practical. However, I'm aware that it can take a long time. It takes effort, of course, and time to cultivate some of these mindsets and some of these practi practices, yeah, habits mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, but having said that, um, just I encourage you to just start slow. Like, like last episode, I said, uh, read some tafsir and understand the Quran and, you know, read the Quran uh, once a week. Start yeah. with that. Yeah. Well, khalas, that, 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 that's like one, uh, that's not too much to ask, you know, mm -hmm. you say, oh, but it's easy for you to say. Well, it is for easy for me to say, but it's also easy for you to just, you know, read Quran once a week, yeah. you know. Yeah. Identify what you've got. Identify what it is that you do and you enjoy doing. Mm. Because, you know, in the, in, the, in the way that there are many doors to paradise, there are also many yeah. things that people are good at. Like you, you, you're suggesting, you know, the read some Quran every day. Other people might want to fast yeah. or do something. You know, there's always no something. Give charity. Whatever you may have may have done in the past that was good for you or easy for you. Even if it's like, you yes. know what? Uh, Start every, with that. Yeah, I'm going to go to Shumai and listen to the khutbah. Or I'm going to, on my way to work, I'm going to listen to uh, some sort of lecture every morning. You know, it's, it's something yeah. just that is accessible to you because everyone's going to be rewarded in their own way for the different things they do. It doesn't necessarily have to... Yeah. You don't have to compare yourself to such and such student of knowledge in such and such country. And if he's memorizing, you know, four pages a day and that's what it takes, then there's no way I'm going to recover out of my, you know, sad state. But... Yeah. Everybody's got something in don't, front of them. Don't don't raise the levels too high at the beginning yeah. in order to convince yourself it's not possible. Yeah, exactly. Because th this is the thing: one page of Quran a week, or fasting one day every two weeks, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing about that is, it's so small that you don't have an excuse, and mm. so that's how you're going to get yourself going, inshallah. Inshallah. Um, yeah, man. But uh, I don't know uh, if we we'll, might as well might as well go into this now. We're talking about the self pity thing, right? Right. You know what? Uh, there is a trend, isn't it? Actually, really and truly, this this whole thing started in the early twentieth century with Karl Marx and his whole uh, thing of the oppressed, right? The oppressed working class versus the uh, elite class, right? Yeah. And that's where communism came from and all that, yeah? Russian Revolution and all of that, yeah? Um, that thinking is actually very healthy and well and alive today in the West as well, yeah? Mm. People say, oh, you know, the US is like 100% anti-communist. But the way the, the, the kind of left wing in the US is, and the way, and a lot of Muslims are attracted to this, is um, idolizing and... and uh, glorifying hardship and uh, uh, pain and suffering and oppression yeah mm. so the way they react to uh, anyone being oppressed is that we should support them purely because they're oppressed now the, the reason Muslims get sucked into this is because in Islam we do have something like that yeah that you should help people out who are oppressed and we definitely have a very strong tradition of that no doubt but the thing is that the way that they take it next level I suppose where they say um, if you're oppressed for your own mistake, you're still oppressed and you're right. Yeah. yeah. Or they say, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a man, but I want to be a woman. And because I want to be a Mormon and no one will accept me as a woman, I'm oppressed and therefore I'm right. Yeah. So right. They, they take it to a next level where they say, if you are, um, if you're oppressed for any reason whatsoever, you're automatically right. And you're automatically should be helped. And those that are uh, like oppressing you, they're automatically wrong. Yeah. Mm. So this is what we have to w watch out for: is the extreme side of that. And no doubt, this is why um, all this self harm and this mental illness thing are taking that too far and over diagnosing it. This is where it all comes from: this idea, this glorifying of oppression. And it's mad that it actually does come from Karl Marx, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. it comes from Shaitan, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, yeah. what a crazy, crazy world. 
Wallahi la Yes, so far. Yeah, man. I think you have to wrap it up right now. Yeah. Sad times. It, I mean. Is there anything else? Because um, I do feel like we, we did cover a lot. Yeah. How long have we been going? Maybe we go on 50 minutes. It's a yeah. good episode. Yeah, we did a good good little sequel to the sequel. Mm. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. So let's think. I want everybody to email us because we haven't had. Uh, well, we have had emails. So it's just we need more. Mm. Really, I like to selectively yeah. pick out the good ones, and the mm. ones that I can't answer, I sort of regretfully have to push to the side. <laughs> but yeah, email yeah. us at uh, what is our email? God, I've forgotten already. Mind Heist Podcast. <laughs> Mind Heist Gmail. Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Mind Heist Podcast at Gmail dot com. Send us your suggestions, yeah. your bits and your bobs, your praise. No, don't send us your praise. I don't like getting praise because I don't know what to say to that. Um, but if you do want to praise us, do it on the iTunes review page. Drop us a yeah, review. Yeah, <laughs> very good. Very smooth. Uh, yeah, if you go on iTunes, leave us a good review. If you don't enjoy yeah. the show, don't leave us a review. And please, please also challenge <laughs> what we've said because yeah. I know a lot of people... Um, might be uh, upset with some of the things we've said, right? And that's that. Like, if we truly are wrong in what we said, like we won't know it unless you kind of challenge us with some good arguments. Yeah, you know? it's just a discussion, you know. It's a discussion and a platform and a give us what you want to yeah. say, and we'll discuss it further. Because at yeah. the end of the day, we might not have a clue what we're talking about, and <laughs> we were learning too. Yeah, in though. the we end, like ju- judge our arguments based on if they make sense and if we're convincing, not just like. Oh, this guy said some area kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we're never going to get too deep into uh, Tafsir and that because yeah. we, we don't want to extend our bounds in terms of what we're allowed yeah. to talk well, that's about. that's another thing people can do, isn't it? They yeah. can say, oh, this guy said the A means this, but I read the Tafsir and it's like something else. Oh, like, yeah, definitely. Check if, we're, us, isn't it? if we're making mistakes in talking about the Dean, it's your obligation to fix us. If you don't, then I'm going to have a beef <laughs> I'll, with I'll you. Give, I'll give out <laughs> Ahi Tweet's address and you can go see him. Oh please don't! Please don't. <laughs> Bro, let let me sign off with this uh, this ayah, which is actually maybe my favorite ayah in the Quran. Go ahead. Uh, so in Surah Al Imran, Allah says, "Wala tahinu, wala tahzanu, wa antum alauna in kuntum mu'minin." Do not be weak, and do not be sad, do not grieve, and you will be higher if you are truly believers. So Allah has given us an instruction and a command. Yeah, this is in the command form. Do not be weak and do not be sad. Allah will not tell you to do something if you can't do it. Yeah, so mm-hmm. think about that. SubhanAllah. Mm-hmm. MashaAllah. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Right, I mean, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we shall record another episode next week, I believe. If you have a suggestion Inshallah. for the next episode, please, please, either you can, you know, even even if you don't want to email, um, I'm on Twitter, you can drop a message there. I mean, you're on uh, the Snaps. You still yep. on the Snaps? Sierra Masters. Sierra Masters. You're yep. on YouTube. Yep. Um, yeah, that's it, really. Assalamu alaikum yep. wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.